this week we're going to be discussing metaphysical poetry. You should take C notes over these slides. Yeah, okay. So metaphysical poetry starts happening around the Renaissance, which you've learned about in your history classes as a rebirth of learning. Poets are getting even more creative. Shakespeare is on the scene, so 1600s, late 1500s. And the metaphysical poets, they weren't even like friends or anything, um, but this push for creativity during the Renaissance made metaphysical poetry what it was. The fundamentals of metaphysical poetry um, is that the work is characterized by the usage of conceits. And some of you have had the word conceits on your literary term flashcards and you know that it's an exaggerated comparison. The conceits that these poets are using were extremely inventive and usually the poems had to do with thinking about love or religion, sometimes death, um, and like I said this was going on in 17th century in England, um, like Shakespeare, but he was not a metaphysical poet. Okay, Don't misunderstand me mentioning him in this video thinking that he was. Meta means above or beyond, and physical means earthly or concrete. So the metaphysical poets moved concrete symbols beyond their meaning into more uh, philosophical symbols, as you'll see in just a minute. So back to what a conceit is. If you haven't had conceit as one of your literary terms, it's kind of like a metaphor. It's an exaggerated comparison between two very unlike things. And in a conceit, the things are so unlike that the reader doesn't even want to compare them, like it's an uncomfortable comparison. But the poet skillfully makes the comparison acceptable to the reader. One example is this very famous poem, The Flea, by John Donne, who we'll talk more about in a minute. Um, and it says, Oh stay, three lives in one flea spare, where we almost, yea, more than married are. This flea is you and I, and this our marriage bed and marriage temple is. Okay, take a second and reread that. Just give you a second with it. So, in other words, um, what John Dunn is saying here, oh, stay, is don't go. This little flea has my blood, your blood, and its own blood. And so, our bodily fluids are already mixed in the flea, so we might as well have sex even though we're not married. So, John Dunn uses this flea as kind of a, it's like, well, we're already both mixed together in there, um, so, ma madam, you know, let's go ahead and get in bed. Um, it rhymed. So, the comparison between the flea and marriage is not one that one would normally make. Um, if someone said to you that fleas are closely related to sex, you might laugh or think they're weird, but the metaphysical poets make it work. Like, once he's finished the poem, you can understand how, well, okay, I could see how that might work. Um, back to John Donne. It looks like John Donne or something, but no, it's pronounced Dunn, like you're done with that assignment. Um, he is the most famous metaphysical poet, and his most famous poem is A Valediction for Bidding Morning that we're going to read together in class this week. Uh, John Dunn wrote during the late 1500s, early 1600s, and again, he was alive at the same time as Shakespeare. Um, I'm not sure if they knew each other or not, but that'd be kind of cool if they did. And that's the end of the show.